Most people have no idea they're sabotaging their own recovery by not getting enough protein. Skimping on protein sets you up for sarcopenia, and that's a hidden threat that could literally sabotage your nerve recovery. This is the critical amount your body truly needs to heal, and it's more than you've ever imagined. Health warriors, have you noticed that your body just doesn't bounce back like it used to? Or that recovery from certain ailments seems incredibly slow or impossible? Well, today, we're diving into the secret weapon your body needs for the ultimate recovery, protein. I'll educate you on the silent muscle thief known as sarcopenia, a hidden threat that could sabotage your nerve recovery. I'll also uncover why protein is your best ally for healing and give you the lowdown on the top sources. Finally, I'll reveal the golden number, the exact amount of protein you need to turbocharge your recovery. So if you're ready to turn your body into a healing machine, stick around because this is one video you can't afford to miss. Coming up. Hey there, health warriors, Dr. M here. Have you ever wondered why you're still struggling to recover from your peripheral neuropathy even after following all the advice we've shared with you in our previous videos? You might be doing everything right, but something's still missing. Well, here's the kicker. It could be that you're not getting enough protein in your diet. That's right. Protein isn't just for building muscles. It's a critical part of your healing and your recovery. And when you don't eat enough protein, you could fall prey to sarcopenia, a sneaky condition where your muscles start to waste away, making recovery even harder. So let's dive into why protein could be the missing link in your healing journey. First, I want you to understand what sarcopenia is. Sarcopenia, which was classified as a disease in 2016, refers to the loss of muscle mass, strength, and performance caused by aging or a sedentary lifestyle. While sarcopenia primarily targets the muscular system, its effects don't stop there. It can also have significant consequences on the nervous system. Let's break down how this muscle wasting condition impacts both the central and peripheral nervous systems. Number one, muscle atrophy. As muscles weaken and atrophy or waste away in sarcopenia, the connections between the muscle fibers and the motor nerves of the peripheral nervous system can deteriorate, leading to impaired nerve signaling. Number two, muscle weakness. As muscle mass declines, Individuals experience reduced strength, making daily activities like walking, climbing stairs, or even getting up from a chair more challenging. This loss of strength can lead to quicker fatigue, making it harder to sustain physical activity over time, and cause frustration. The result is the person typically becomes less active, resulting in decreased stimulation of the peripheral nerves and the brain. The decreased activity impairs neurogenesis, the formation of new healthy nerves in the brain and in the peripheral nerves. Number three, increased systemic inflammation. Sarcopenia increases systemic inflammation and believe it or not, many doctors overlook this concept. So let me break it down briefly. We usually think of muscles as just being responsible for movement but they also release important signaling molecules called myokines. These molecules help regulate inflammation, metabolism, and even brain function. As muscle mass decreases, the remaining muscle fibers are put under chronic stress, which disrupts the normal production of myokines and leads to an increased production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, like interleukin-6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. Unlike myokines, which generally have protective effects, these cytokines promote inflammation. On top of this, the muscle loss in sarcopenia is often accompanied by an increase in fat tissue within and around the muscles, which also produces pro-inflammatory cytokines, further increasing systemic inflammation. Number five, insulin resistance. Declining muscle mass can lead to insulin resistance and impaired glucose metabolism, leading to type 2 diabetes. Up to 70% of both pre-diabetics and diabetics will develop peripheral nerve damage. 
Along with this, insulin resistance can impair the brain's ability to utilize glucose, its primary fuel source, and that leads to cognitive decline and dementia. Okay, now that we've uncovered how sarcopenia leads to muscle loss, nervous system deterioration, and inflammation, it's clear that addressing this issue is critical. And here's the good news. The best way to combat sarcopenia is with a simple yet powerful tool that's incredibly effective, and that's taking in more protein. Protein isn't just a building block for muscles. It's the cornerstone of recovery and regeneration throughout the body. You need sufficient protein for building and repairing tissues in the body, including your nerves. It's necessary to maintain a strong immune system. It's necessary for wound healing and recovery. And amongst other things, proteins are also involved in the transport and storage of nutrients throughout the body, like oxygen, vitamins, and minerals. So let's look at how protein is crucial for the health, function, and repair of your peripheral nerves. The proteins you consume are essential for maintaining the structure and integrity of nerve cells, including the axons, which are the long nerve fibers that transmit signals. And it's also crucial for the myelin sheath, the protective coating around axons. Specific proteins like myelin basic protein, or MBP, are essential for the formation, maintenance, and repair of the myelin sheath of the nerve, which enhances the speed of the nerve signal transmission, and it insulates nerve fibers. Proteins are also necessary for the production of neurotransmitters, and those are the chemicals that transmit signals between nerve cells. When peripheral nerves are damaged, whether it's from injury or conditions like diabetes, autoimmune diseases, or other conditions, the body relies, relies on protein to repair and regenerate the nerve tissue, which are dependent upon protein to grow new nerve fibers and repair the myelin sheath. This repair is critical for restoring normal nerve function. So now that we understand how critical protein intake is for recovery, let's look at the best protein sources. There is no arguing the fact that animal-based protein sources are the best protein sources hands down, especially when it comes to healing. So we're talking about meats like chicken breasts, turkey, and beef. You want to make sure these meat sources are organic and the beef is grass-raised and grass-finished, meaning the cattle are not fed grains. They get to eat what they're supposed to eat, and that's grass. This meat will be much higher in antioxidants and omega-3 fatty acids. Fortunately, Costco now has a good supply of organic chicken and beef so you don't have to break the bank. Seafood is also a great source of protein, but make sure you're only consuming fish or shellfish low in mercury. And let's not forget one of the best all-time protein sources, the humble egg. This is such an important topic that we did two videos on the nutritional impact of eggs on the body and healing and how to choose the right eggs. I'll leave the links below for you if you miss these videos. Now, here are four reasons why animal-based proteins are a better source of protein for healing. Number one, it has a complete protein profile. Animal-based proteins are complete proteins, meaning they contain all nine essential amino acids in the right proportions that are needed by the human body. Essential amino acids can't be synthesized by the body, so you have to get them through your diet. Number two, it has a higher protein content. Animal products typically contain a higher concentration of protein per serving compared to plant-based sources. For example, a four ounce serving of chicken breast contains 35 grams of protein. A four ounce portion of red meat contains approximately 28 grams of protein. While a one cup serving or eight ounces of rice and beans, which is a necessary combination to form a complete protein, only contains seven grams of protein. This is the main reason that vegetarians and especially vegans struggle to meet the necessary protein requirements for their body. In a few weeks, I'll go into this in greater detail for those of you who are vegetarian and ve vegan, and I'll teach you how you can meet your necessary protein requirements for healing. So make sure you click on that bell to get notified when that video gets released. Okay, on to number three. Animal protein sources have higher bioavailability. Animal proteins have easier absorption and digestibility because they're structurally similar to the proteins found in the human body. Number four, nutrient density. 
Animal protein sources such as meat, fish, eggs, and dairy are rich in a wide array of other essential nutrients like vitamin B12 iron, zinc, and omega-3 fatty acids. These nutrients play important roles in energy production, immune function, and nervous system health. In particular, vital molecules like creatine and carnosine are only found in animal products. They're not present in plant-based prote uh, proteins or plant-based foods. These nutrients are important for muscle function and brain health. Now, here's the million dollar question. So are you guys sensing a side note? All right, how much protein do I need? This is one of the most commonly asked questions by everyone, and it's an excellent question. So I'll cover exactly how much protein you need, but I want you to realize there's more to replacing and rebuilding your muscle than just the protein intake. The time of day you take in protein is also very important, along with stimulating your muscle sensitivity so that your body can utilize the protein to build muscles. Now, I'll cover each of these for you. First, let's look at how much protein you need to prevent or overcome sarcopenia to help in the recovery of your nerves and really the recovery of any illness. The average person, male or female, should consume one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight. So if you weigh 135 pounds, you should consume 135 grams of protein per day. If you're 200 pounds, then you should eat 200 grams of protein per day. Now, did you notice I said one gram of protein for each pound of ideal body weight? So let me explain what that means. If you're a female who weighs 180 pounds, but your ideal body weight you want to be at is 130 pounds, then you should only take in the amount of protein to get you to your ideal weight, which would be 130 grams of protein. The same holds true for a male. Let's say you're a 250 pound man who wants to get down to 175 pounds. Then the amount of protein you would eat daily would be 175 grams of protein. Make sense? Okay, I want you to realize that this is much higher than the RDA recommendations, which state you only need 0.36 grams of protein per pound of body weight, or 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. Now, there's a huge difference in these numbers, and here's the reason why. RDA recommendations are based on the minimum amount of nutrient you need to prevent a deficiency. So basically, the bare minimum nutrients you need to keep you alive. The RDA numbers are not based on what will restore your health. So when we're talking about sarcopenia, muscle loss, we can't replace that muscle by following RDA guidelines. Now, some of you might be worried that this much protein may damage your kidneys, especially if you already have kidney disease. So let me share some facts with you. Many decades ago, it was believed that a high protein diet caused kidney damage and led to chronic kidney disease. The good news is that science has now acknowledged that there is no link between a high protein diet and kidney damage. A 2018 study that analyzed data from 28 papers published between 1975 and 2016 found no evidence that high protein diets cause kidney damage in adults. The studies included more than 1,300 participants, including those who were healthy, who were obese, or had type 2 diabetes and or high blood pressure. None of the participants were diagnosed with chronic kidney disease. Another study found that protein intakes of 170 to 243 percent of the recommended dietary allowance, or RDA, did not impair renal function in a group of 37 athletes. I'll leave the links to these studies below for you. Okay, well, let's move on to the best time of day to eat your protein for maximum muscle protein synthesis. Well, when you're young, the timing of your meals isn't as critical because your cells are strong, they're healthy, and very efficient at avoiding protein degradation or breakdown. But as you age, especially after your 50s, the time of day you eat protein makes a tremendous difference in the health of your skeletal muscle and your ability to add more muscle. So remember when your mom used to say that breakfast was the most important meal of the day? <laughs> well, it turns out she was right. 
Eating protein at the first meal of the day will set the stage for good muscle health and muscle growth. Now, notice that I said the first meal as opposed to breakfast. This is because if you're doing intermittent fasting, your first meal might not be until 11 a.m. or even later. Once you pass your 50s and approach your 60s, longer periods of fasting can actually impair skeletal muscle development because the efficiency of muscle protein synthesis is very poor. Research has shown during your first meal, you should aim to consume 40 to 50 grams of protein to stimulate skeletal muscle development. So let's see what that would look like in terms of food. 40 grams of protein might include four whole eggs and four slices of turkey bacon. Now, for Dr. C, this amount is no problem at all. However, I gotta tell you, this amount of food would be a bit of a struggle for me. So, if this is too much food for you in one sitting, here's what you can do. Distribute your protein intake throughout the day. Spreading your protein intake evenly across meals can still help maintain amino acids in the blood, which can support muscle protein synthesis or MPS throughout the day. So for instance, eating 25 to 30 grams of protein at each meal might be more manageable, but you do need to make sure you're getting the same uh, number of grams of protein necessary throughout the day. And that's what I went through earlier about how many grams you need based on your body weight. Okay, number two, include leucine-rich foods. Leucine is a key amino acid that plays a crucial role in triggering MPS, muscle protein synthesis. So incorporating leucine-rich protein sources like meats and fish, whey protein, cheeses like goat cheese, Parmesan, Romano, and Gouda cheese are great sources. Now, for vegans, you can get a good amount of leucine from lentils and also from spirulina, but it's to a much lesser extent in spirulina. Leucine can help maximize the MPS response even if total protein intake ends up lower. Okay, now next, number three. Add protein powder smoothies to your daily intake. If getting all required protein in one meal is difficult, adding a protein shake, especially using a concentrated whey protein, is a great way to supplement. We especially like pasture-raised goat whey. These are a couple of brands that we use and they're a good quality and no, we're not getting paid by these brands. We actually use them, they're in our pantry. So I'll have the links for you down below. Number four, next. Exercise, engaging in any form of exercise, whether it's resistance training or even light physical activity before a meal can stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Even if your protein intake is lower, the combination of exercise and protein has a synergistic effect. So for neuropathy sufferers who can engage in a rigorous workout, don't worry. You can simply do the neuropathy exercise video we made and that will be sufficient to generate more muscle protein synthesis in your body. For those of you whose symptoms are very severe and you can't do more than five minutes of these exercises, don't worry because we've broken down the videos into individual exercises. So just start with one exercise at a time and gradually add on exercises. And now you have absolutely no excuse for not doing your neuropathy exercises. Health warriors, your body is capable of incredible healing and transformation, but it needs to have the right tools. Whether it's repairing muscle fibers, supporting nerve health, or fueling the processes that keep our body functioning optimally, protein is at the heart of it all. It's not just a nutrient, it's a powerful ally in your journey to regain strength and vitality. So whether you're battling the effects of aging, recovering from peripheral neuropathy, or another illness, don't underestimate the role of protein in your recovery arsenal. Take action now. Fuel your body with the nutrients it needs and watch as you regain the power to reclaim your health. If you know of anyone who's struggling to recover from peripheral neuropathy or another illness, please share this video with them. It may be the missing link to their recovery. Also, don't forget to like us and subscribe so we can keep more empowering videos coming your way. Oh, and don't forget to click on the bell to get notified of our next video. Until next time, health warriors, I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. Blessings. Uh, 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 uh.
<laughs> Hi, baby girl. Yes, I love you. Oh, you're so pretty. You're so pretty. Mama loves you. Take action now. Now. <laughs>